The Trust for Public Land is a national conservation organization and we use GIS to strategically pinpoint those lands that need to be conserved on the landscape uh, based on various criteria. GIS is really at the hub of the wheel of how we do our work as an organization that does everything from urban parks to rural land conservation. We work in the medium of land and so spatial information becomes incredibly powerful for us to deliver our work very strategically around objectives, whether it's climate smart cities or whether it's creating new recreational opportunities for people in mountainous areas. Spatial information is really the core of aligning our work strategically for those kinds of outcomes. Yeah, our Urban Heat Risk Explorer application, it's an app that can be used on the computer, on tablets, and on smartphones. And the goal with this was to get information out to community members about heat islands. A lot of people don't know what heat islands are, and they don't even know they're living in one. They know that it's hot, and they know that it gets really hot in the summertime when average temperatures get above a certain threshold. And so the whole idea behind the app was to give them information, let them know that they are in an urban heat island, and then give them information about what they can do as a community to um, make the places where they live cooler, to take care of themselves. You know, how can they affect uh, where they live, their communities, and the health factors in their communities related to heat risk? Heat risks are a, a dimension of climate resilience that's been a little bit overlooked. Uh, and you know, there's been a lot of attention to flood risks. They've made great television. Um, in heat, heat risks, maybe not so much. Um, but if you look at the future threats to the country, heat risks are more widespread. And in a way, we have more confidence about the amount of threat in, into the future. Um, and so we think that this app is going to help uh, increase awareness about the kinds of heat risks that folks face in the future. It's also, I think, going to help uh, increase awareness about the kinds of actions that we can take in our communities uh, to increase our resilience to heat risk and lessen heat risk with things like green infrastructure and taking advantage of built infrastructure like uh, heat shelters and other resources that are being made available to communities uh, for people to protect themselves from these events. The role that uh, GIS plays in our app, um, you know, GIS data is really the driver for the application. So we needed to use satellite imagery and then also models in the ArcGIS model builder environment to create the information that gets pushed out in the application. And one of our goals was to really create a template, so using ArcGIS models to create these templates that would allow us to take this app to scale. You know, we want to push this out nationally and internationally, so to be able to pinpoint the right data that we could use, create these models where we could template the data into the app directly is, was very important for us. GIS is really at the core uh, of this app because heat islands and heat risks are, are something that again they play out in that in that dimension of land and they're very different across urban areas. Certain neighborhoods uh, because of the heat island effect uh, face much greater heat risks than others and so we think it's really important for people to understand not just what the temperature is in their city but what's happening in their neighborhoods and again as well I think educating people about the risks that they face right there in the parts of cities where they live will increase their uh, awareness of the opportunities that they and their neighbors can undertake actions in partnerships with organizations like ours and city governments to bring in trees and other kinds of green infrastructure to make those communities less vulnerable to those types of events in the future.